on. Let's get it started with buying bonds, bearish or bullish. Listen, if markets are going to be in, in a corrective mode, you're going to get a bid in bonds. They've gotten absolutely destroyed. I mean, you could have bought literally anything in the last year and made money except bonds. Even gold did better than bonds. That's how bad bonds have been. If the IEF, which is the 7 to 10-year Treasury bond ETF, which essentially tracks the benchmark yield, if uh, stocks are going to be correcting, bonds are going to get a bid, particularly on a relative basis, so I think it's a good place to hide uh, while you're getting small in stocks or if you're already small. Uh, if we're above 114 on the IEF, I like it long. Below that, then stocks are probably doing pretty well and, and you don't need that safety. Uh, 114 is my level there. Okay, something to look out for. It all started on March 1st with the bottoming out of consumer staples, which kind of gave us the first signs of defensive rotation. So let's talk about it. Bearish or bullish on defensive rotation? Yeah, so remember, it was consumer staples and utilities bottomed out on a relative basis. So that's really the whole thing. Staples can do well. Utilities can do well when the stock market is going up. That's just normal. They're stocks too, right? It's when they're outperforming that tends to happen historically when stocks are under pressure, right? People are hiding. What are staples? Staples, these are things that we're going to do no matter how bad the economy is. Still going to smoke cigarettes and drink beer and Coca-Cola and all those things. Like We're still going to brush our teeth and wash our dishes. All of those stocks are consumer staples. So they tend to do relatively well when stocks are under pressure. So when you saw that at the time in early March, it was like, well, that's one thing. Now, are other things going to start to add up? And then eventually they did. But that those were the leadership groups. So if you continue to see this defensive bid in Utes, REITs, and consumer staples, and you're seeing it in the bond market as well. Look at Japanese yen relative to Australian dollar. If you're seeing all of those bidding on a relative basis, it's probably happening in an environment that stocks are under pressure. Okay, let's talk about correction versus crash. Correction, normal part of the market. Where do you stand on this one? No doubt about it. And you go back to the greatest bull markets of all time, you had corrections, right? Nothing goes straight up. Uh, sometimes it feels like it goes straight up because it does happen during certain periods. And, you know, small caps had a historic run. Uh, the NASDAQ had a historic run. I mean, at times, it most certainly felt that stocks only go up just by every dip. But any historian, and as a market participant, you have to be a historian and study the past. Corrections are perfectly normal. Um, it doesn't necessarily mean it has to be a crash. Back in October of 2018, I'm like, uh-oh, there is unlimited downside. Like, there's real risk in the market. A year ago, back in January and February of 2020, same thing. Like, man, interest rates can crash. If interest rates are crashing, what, what's the market doing in that environment? Probably not too good. Like, there was a lot of intermarket relationships in those periods that were pointing more towards crash. And those are words that we used. Unlimited risk. Those are words that we were using. In this case, the weight of the evidence is overwhelmingly pointing to this being a digestion of gains rather than the start of something massive. So the, fo the follow-up, you know, for anybody listening, it really boils down to who are you? Like, what the hell are you doing here? Like, if, if, because there are certain strategies that are more conducive to succeeding in certain environments and not others. So if you're a swing trader, you know, uh, um, a, a trend-following swing trader, a sideways messy environment is probably not very good. But if you are a mean reverter using option strategies and things like that, that do well in this sort of environment, this is your time to shine, right? If you're a longer term investor, this is the time to whip out the shopping list, things that you have maybe wanted to buy after some corrections. I think you can be patient, but in the coming months, I think now's the time if you're longer term to go either find the things that you missed that you wanted to be in or the things that you weren't big enough in things like that. So it really, I think, depends on who you are. And hopefully you're not someone who gets scared easily because correction does not always mean crash. Okay, JC, I know you have a baseball background. There is just a little bit more time before opening day, and MLB has announced that they are going to crack down on pitchers using alternative substances on the ball. Using statistics on spin rate, bearish or bullish on this one? Listen, with, with more technology, you're getting better data. You know, I, you know, we would screw around, you know, put spit on the ball and mess around. I can never figure it out. Like, you know, we've cut the ball. Like, even with, even like if I had hypothetically known how to cheat properly, it still wouldn't work. So I could never figure it out. So I'm not, I don't know, maybe I'm wrong, but I'm pretty sure there's not really much of that going on in the league. It's tough to do.
you know, you got to be really good at that. And I never was. Not enough going on in the league. I think Trevor Bauer would disagree as he says 70% of Major League Baseball pitchers are using some sort of alternative substance. Remains to wow. be seen. JC, thank you so much for all this and so much more. You can check out allstarcharts.com. Okay, so let me give you a few substances that they're using. So sunscreen is one of the biggest culprits, right? It's easy. The guys have it. You know, a little bullfrog. Put it on there. Right? Spit. Pine tar, which you can have right under your glove, back of the hat, right under the brim. I mean, I've heard of... And what's the pine tar? So you're stickier, so you get a bigger spin on the, on the curve? More rotations. Elusive.